Hi everyone. Last week we heard the story about how Moses fled to Midian after killing an Egyptian and he was taken in by a man called Ruel and married his daughter called Zipporah. Uh, this story we're going to do today happens many years later in the life of Moses and he's visited by his father-in-law Jethro who's probably but not certainly the same person as Ruel from last week's story. And I think this story offers a really good picture of what a healthy relationship can look like in which uh, someone offers a fairly hard challenge in a way that's quite critical, but in a way that's also healthy and constructive and finally that is godly. So let's look at what happened. First of all, reading from the passage, Moses went out to meet his father-in-law and bowed down and kissed him. They greeted each other and then went into the tent. So this shows their relationship already has a real warmth and a respect because they greet each other and bowing down and kissing is a real sign of uh, closeness. And then Moses told his father-in-law about everything the Lord had done to Pharaoh and the Egyptians for Israel's sake and about all the hardships that they'd met along the way and how the Lord had saved them. So here we also have a real honesty because it would have been very easy for Moses just to go and tell the good bits of the story about how, Mo how God saved them from Egypt and it was great. But then he also tells them the hardships and the struggles. Uh, and with all the time that Israelites spent in the desert, there were a lot of struggles. So this shows uh, the closeness of their relationship. And then let's look at Jethro's response. Jethro was a priest of God and his son-in-law, um, Moses, is then has gone on to become God's one chosen person to lead Israel. Now, it'd be very easy for Jethro to be kind of happy on the outside, but actually a bit resentful or a bit jealous. How can Moses have all of these things and I've been faithfully serving God all this time? But there's not even a hint of that. Jethro was delighted to hear about the good things the Lord had done. And then they go on, he says, praise be to God who rescued you. And then he offers a burnt offering and other sacrifices to God. So this shows um, his genuine happiness for his son's success and for having been chosen by God. And also the godliness of their relationship, because all of what's happened leads them to a place of worship. And then, so far, everything's sounding great. But then something surprising happens. The next day, Moses is out judging the people. And then Moses' father-in-law says, what you are doing is not good. You and these people who come to you will only weigh yourselves out. The work is too heavy for you. You cannot hand it alone. That's quite critical. It's not sugar-coated either. It's pretty straight up. He didn't start by saying, Moses, you're doing a great job, but here's one thing you could do to make it even better. No, he says what you're doing is not good. Now, if it just stopped there, this wouldn't be very helpful because even if it's true, no one just needs to hear what you're doing is bad, great. But instead, he goes on and he offers advice. He says, listen now to me and I'll give you some advice and may God be with you. And then he goes on to say, you must be the people's representative and teach them his decrees and instructions. But select capable men from all the people and have them serve as judges for the people at all times. So that's not the content of the advice isn't really what I want to look at today. But a side note is the advice here is that you need to delegate when you're a leader. And that works out. It ended up being really wise advice for Moses and for the Israelites. But what I want to look at now is that Jethro doesn't just offer criticism. He starts quite bluntly criticising, but then he goes on to offer what's actually some really good advice. And what's more, this advice is actually quite positive in that it really builds Moses up. He could have told Moses, Moses, why don't you stop doing that now and we'll get someone who's more competent, you know, like me, haha, <laughs> or, or someone else who can go and judge the people. But instead, what he says is, Moses, you still have a role to play. And to quote here, he says, you must be the people's representative before God and bring their disputes to him. Teach them his decrees and instructions and show them the way they are to live and how they are to behave. So Moses still has a key role. So he's not undermining Moses's position as God's chosen, but he's affirming it. But while giving wise advice on how to use it better. And then finally, Let's look at how Moses responds. Now, if you're Moses, all the things you've said and done after the life you've lived and all the miracles that God has done, God has done through you, it would be very easy 
to kind of dismiss this advice and tell Jethro, uh, you know, basically tell Jethro to get out of town. This is not useful advice. I don't want to hear this. I don't care. But instead, Moses listened to his father-in-law and did everything he said. Now, I think this shows a real humility of character on Moses' part, that he's willing to accept advice in this situation. And especially something as blunt as what you are doing is not good. And I think that there's three important aspects of this relationship and of this situation that helped Moses accept the advice here. Now, the first is the relationship context. Moses and Jethro already had a close relationship in which they were respectful of each other and they clearly had an intimacy and loved each other, as we saw earlier, and also that it was a godly relationship because they worshipped together. That's the first thing. And in that context, it's much easier to accept advice. Second, and probably most pragmatic, is that it was good advice. Now, it doesn't. if, if Jethro had given him bad advice, then Moses would have been right to reject it, even if it was given in love. But because it's good advice given in love, then um, Moses accepted it. And finally, the advice is respectfully, is, even though there's quite a strong criticism at the start, ultimately the advice is affirming and respectful because it's building up Moses' role as God's chosen person. And for all of those reasons, that's why Moses, I think, why Moses accepts it. And I think there's definitely some lessons in there for our relationships in the church.